everyone today i want to talk to you guys about the nintendo 64. now the nintendo 64 gets a pretty bad rap um on, on some complaints i can understand uh you know one of the biggest issues with me with, with nintendo 64 was was the camera the camera angles uh in games like conquers even super mario brothers 64 uh by and large people love those video games but you spend a lot of time adjusting the camera with the c buttons which can be very very annoying however that being said it doesn't take away from really great games like that however i'm here to tell you that Despite the super popular games, there are some other really enjoyable games on there, and this is my top 5 Nintendo 64 gems. Oh, it's Friday night, don't know what I'm gonna do tonight. I could sit here and pick my nose while I watch a brand new video. Oh, oh. Top 5 Friday on Friday tonight. Charlie Blast Territory. <clears throat> I sound like a fucking tool bag. <laughs> Now, for anyone out there like me who loves puzzle games, games like Dr. Mario, games like Tetris, um, even on the Nintendo 64, New Tetris, Magical Tetris Chase, those are super fast-paced puzzle games. Charlie Blast is not like that. However, it is still going to make you think just as much as those games. The point of this game is you're on different islands and you have one fuse bomb and you have to move TNT boxes and other bombs around to where when you light that fuse bomb, it creates a chain reaction and destroys everything on the island, so to speak. This is one of those games where one wrong move will make you have to restart the entire level. Now again, it's not one of these super fast paced, fast thinking kind of puzzle games like Tetris, but it is challenging. It will challenge your mind. It will make you stop and look around and even adjust that camera to see where can I move this box? Where can I move this bomb to get that chain reaction to where everything blows up? Now, while graphically and musically, this game may not be the best, I put this game on my list because of the sheer fun factor. Matter of fact, put this game on and turn on the radio, turn on Spotify or whatever it is you might use out there. I guarantee you're gonna have fun playing this game for a few hours at a time. Number four, Disney's Tarzan. So one of my guilty pleasures in gaming is quote unquote, kids games. I love Aladdin. I love Lion King on Genesis and Super Nintendo. Uh, I love the game Up on PlayStation 3. And Disney's Tarzan on Nintendo 64 is going to be no exception to that rule. Uh, again, guilty pleasure of mine, and that's mainly why this is on this list. This is considered a 2.5D side-scrolling platformer. The 2.5D comes from the fact that it's a, it's a, a 2D side-scrolling kind of game, action game but the environments are 3D, uh, the enemies are 3D, and sometimes even come out from the background into the foreground to you know, walk their path or whatever. While this is not a super, super hard challenging game, it is an extremely fun game. You play as Tarzan first as a child and then as an adult. Your main weapon is fruit, but along the way you can get different power-ups, uh, different weapons, including a knife for hand-to-hand -hand close combat fighting. And I use that term loosely. Um, you know, when you just have lemurs coming at you, I guess how, how much of a badass do you need to be? I can't say ass, can I? <laughs> but there are things like collect Tarzan, collect all the letters Tarzan, kind of like uh, Donkey Kong Country. You collect Kong and you get something special. This is no different except in Tarzan, you collect T-A-R-Z-A-N. You can unlock clips from the animated film, Disney's Tarzan of the same name. And that's exactly what this game is based after, the Disney Tarzan movie. I highly recommend checking this one out. Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. So let me start this by saying I love the Miss Pac-Man franchise. I love Miss Pac-Man game, especially the arcade. If I'm anywhere that has a Miss Pac-Man machine, I have to play it. I have to pump quarters into that machine. It's kind of just like, it's almost like an OCD, just I can't help myself kind of thing. I actually enjoy Miss Pac-Man more than I do Pac-Man, which says something because Pac-Man had Pac-Mania running wild across the country back in the 80s. Why do I like this game so much? It's a different take on the Miss Pac-Man arcade. It's a 3D, definitely in that puzzle category. So what makes this game so unique that I had to have it this high on my list? It's like Miss Pac-Man on steroids. So while you're going through these different puzzles, you have moving blocks, you have explosives, you have keys, locked doors, things like that that you have to find along your journey to help you. Uh, there's even parts where you have to hit certain blocks to make you jump or catapult you to 
the next part of the maze to keep you going. While all that stuff keeps your brain going and is definitely challenging in its own, the multiplayer is probably where this game stands out amongst other multiplayer games on the console. So you have three multiplayer modes and you can play up to four people, four human people on this game, which makes for great couch co-op which I think we've lost over the years, honestly. You got Dot Mania, and basically what it is is you have pack dots that are, are sprayed out through a fountain. First person to get 80 pack dots wins. Second mode is called Ghost Tag, and basically all the players are ghosts. One person in a rotating fashion uh, plays as Miss Pac-Man. So if you're a ghost, you touch Miss Pac-Man, you become Miss Pac-Man. The point is to avoid the ghost, just like in the regular game. First person to get 50 pack dots wins. The last multiplayer mode is called the bomb. Basically you got 30 seconds, one person starts with the bomb. Uh, when you touch another player, that person gets the bomb. At the end of that 30 seconds, whoever is holding the bomb, well, they lose. And as another little bonus, you actually get the classic Miss Pac-Man arcade game. So in this game, you literally have five different game modes. If you're a lover of Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, you definitely need to pick this one up and try it if you have not already. It is how they say a good. Number two, Winback. Winback is an action game where you play as Jean-Luc Cougar and basically the point of the game is to infiltrate a laser satellite command center. Now, why did I put this game on the list? For a multiple of reasons. One, it actually controls really well. It's easy to pick up even if you don't have an instruction manual and learn what's going on and learn what to do. Some of the unique things in this game have gone on to inspire other games to use what they've done or taken what they've done and improve upon it. Um, for example, the cover system. The cover system in this game is like none other in this generation of console. Matter of fact, the cover system influenced games like Kill Switch, Gears of War, and Metal Gear Solid 2. For those who don't know what a cover system is, basically you can hide behind crates, you can hide behind boxes, you can hide behind peek out whenever you want to peek out and shoot the bad guy. It is literally that. It provides you cover so you're not sitting around in the open. Other shooters like GoldenEye did not have this, so you're wide open and you're just taking bullets and taking fire. Winback also featured a laser sight system, and that's for your gun. There was literally a laser, and this was used in later games such as Metal Gear Solid 2 and one of my personal favorite games of all time, Resident Evil 4. I'm not saying Winback did laser sights first, but they did it well and they did it right. So much so that other games, other big franchise games, were inspired to use the same laser sights. So you fight your way through a horde of enemies, and essentially, Actually, the name of the game here is Speed. You have two different endings based on how long it takes you to beat the game, a good and a bad ending. So your first playthrough, probably want to take your time, probably going to get whatever ending it throws at you. After that, kind of look at it as speed running through the game to get that second ending. The controls, it's actually really easy to control. It's a fun game. If you want to see one of the earliest pioneers of using cover fire and laser sights on weapons, definitely check this game out. Number one, Robotron 64. This is definitely a throwback to the arcade Robotron. And I'll be honest, I did not play this one when I was younger and I have not played it as an adult. I recently played this game and had an absolute blast with it. Basically, you're on a, let's call it a map. Okay, if you will, it's a square. You got 3D polygons, you have 3D fighters and think Super Smash TV. If you are a fan of the Smash TV series, and I am, you are really, really going to enjoy this game. The music is actually really fun. It's challenging. It's easy to collect free men and one-ups, which actually means you can kind of sit here and marathon this game and just play for hours and hours and hours. Even if you lose five, six, 10 guys in a row, at this point, you should have already stockpiled. <coughs> <coughs> At this point, you should have already stockpiled a plethora of free men, and it shouldn't matter. The reason I put this number one, straight up sheer fun factor. A big part of that fun is actually playing couch co-op two player. Yes, there is a multiplayer mode, and it's not just, I mean, you do have the option for player one to go, player two to go, see who has the highest score at the end of the day. But if you do a co-op two player, where one guy is controlling the man, the other guy is controlling the weapon, it makes for a really entertaining <laughs> entertaining gameplay experience. Um, it could also make for, you know, you yelling at your buddy going, shoot, shoot this way, shoot that way. It's not as easy as it looks. Uh, so if you're the guy yelling at the guy shooting, switch roles for, for a couple of rounds and you'll understand that it's way more difficult than you think it is. But that factor, that, that <clears throat> I guess gyromite factor where you have to 
help each other control one person. The challenge and the fun factor in that is why I put this number one on my hidden gems list. This game should not be super hard to find. It shouldn't be super expensive. I would definitely go pick this one up if you're a fan of Robotron, even if you're not. The first time I picked this up and played it, I played it for, I don't know, 10 minutes. And I'll be honest, I was hooked. So if you're looking for a game that's gonna draw you in immediately, right away, this is the game for you. All right, guys, that's my top five Nintendo 64 hidden gems. Like I said at the beginning of this video, Nintendo 64 was not all that bad outside of its core franchises like Mario and Zelda. Honestly, I could have made this a top 10 list, but maybe I'll revisit this a uh, little bit later down the road and give you guys another top five hidden gems. <clears throat> Ah. <coughs> 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 <coughs>